Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving in our heart, thanking you that you are our Father and that we are your children and that we are your beloved. We are the apple of your eye. Father, I thank you right now that we receive, we believe we receive our fresh living word from you, our daily bread that will feed us, that will nourish us, that is our milk and our meat. Father, I thank you right now that you anoint me to minister this word. I thank you, Father, that you put your words into my mouth, your thoughts into my mind. And Father, I thank you that this word is exactly what you would have us to hear today and to receive. Thank you for every person that you've called to hear and to receive this word, this truth, and that you give each one a listening, focused ear and mind and a receptive heart that this word is alive and powerful to them. And I bless, I speak a blessing over every one of you. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless your ears. I bless your mind. I bless your spirit to receive in Jesus' name. And now confess with me by faith the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. Jesus is Lord of all. He is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And that includes me and my family in Jesus name. And now let's confess, believe and confess our reception of the word of God. Father in Jesus name. I thank you that you open my ears to hear as the learned, that you waken me morning by morning to hear as the learned. And I am not rebellious, neither turned our way back. Thank you, Father, that as this word enters into my ears and into my heart, I hear it, I receive it, and I bring forth a hundredfold fruit. Today, I hear what the Spirit is saying to me personally in Jesus' name. And thank you, Father, that every moment of every day I am led by the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit's been ministering to us on who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what we can do in Christ. All, and it's all because of Jesus. It's not anything that we do of ourselves, and he gets all the praise and all the glory for everything. So yesterday we finished up on the peace of God that he has given to us, that is in us, and his covenant of peace that he has made with us. And it's all of him. All things are of him, by him, and for him. Praise God. So today we're going to look at another spiritual force another part of his divine nature that he has given to us. Peter tells us that whereby are given to us exceeding great and valuable promises, that by these we are partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So this, again, is another part of our divine nature. And this is the joy of the Lord. It's not a joy that we manufacture. It's his joy. His joy, just like the peace is his peace that he has given to us. And it's something for us to receive by faith, to acknowledge and believe. So we're going to go first of all to Luke chapter 1 verse 13. And as, as we're going through these scriptures, notice how the heart of the Father is always proclaiming joy. How he, he desires for you to be filled with his joy. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and you shall call his name John, and you shall have joy and gladness, 
Now, when God speaks something, what is he doing? He is creating. His words are powerful, alive and powerful. So God doesn't just speak to be speaking. He's always creating with his words. He's always imparting good things. It's always good with his words. But you shall have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. That was a prophecy. That was what he spoke so that it would come to pass. Then in Luke 1 40, this was when Mary, after she had received the word from the angel, and she said, Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel had told her that Elizabeth, her cousin, was also pregnant with a son. And so Mary, believing the word of God, simply by just believing the word, believing what the angel had said to her, she left and she went to the house of Elizabeth and Zacharias. And so she entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. So these are the words of the Holy Spirit through Elizabeth. And he spake out with a, she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. You know, that's, um, I'm going to pause here, but we can speak that over our children, our grandchildren, um, great-grandchildren, or people that you know that are pregnant, and speak, blessed is the fruit of your womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And so then in Luke 2, verse 10, this was after Jesus' birth, and the angel said unto them, to the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You know, I think we need to examine um, exactly how we're ministering salvation because here it says that these are good tidings of great joy. And that's what the gospel is. The Savior, Jesus Christ, who came, who was sent by God for the purpose of becoming our sin, our judgment, our curse on the cross and giving us his righteousness, his life, and his inheritance. Then Jesus, now we're going to fast forward a little bit. So now Jesus uh, has his disciples and listen to what he says. Listen specifically to the word joy. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So I'm going to speak this over you. These things have I spoken unto you that his joy, the joy of the Lord, might remain in you and that your joy, the joy of the Lord in you, might be full. Then in John 16, 22, Jesus said this, and he was speaking to his disciples. And you now therefore have sorrow, because he had just told them that he was going away. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice. Notice that, your heart shall rejoice. Our heart should be rejoicing at Jesus all of the time 
looking at Jesus and our heart rejoicing over him and what he's done for us. And your joy, no man takes from you. That's a good word. He said, I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy will no man take from you. So I'm going to speak this as well, that your heart, your joy, no man takes from you. So you speak that over yourself. Father, I thank you that I have your joy and that my joy, which is your joy, no man takes from me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, no, he says, and in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. So why does he want you to ask and receive? And again, he didn't put a limit on that. He didn't say if it's spiritual, physical, something fun, something you just desire, clothes, toys. You know, adults have toys too, like um, boats and watercraft and airplanes and things like that. Those are, and fun cars. So he didn't put a limit on it. He just said, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. It's the Father's desire for His children to be so filled with joy, to have your prayers answered about everything so that your heart is just so full of joy with all of the wonderful things that He's done for you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And then in John 17, verse 13, Jesus, again speaking to the disciples, And now come I to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy, my joy, notice this, my joy, fulfilled in themselves. So Jesus then went to be with the Father, and now this is the message that I believe it was Peter was ministering in Acts 2, verse 26, and he was quoting Psalms, a prophecy in Psalms about Jesus. So I'm not going to read the prophecy in Psalms, but this is, this is the prophecy fulfilled, and Peter is ministering this to the multitude of people. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You shall make me full of joy with your countenance. This was a prophecy about Jesus. So God even prophesied that Jesus would have joy. And even that joy would be in him even while he was in hell. In Romans 14 verse 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but listen to this, the kingdom of God is His righteousness, His peace, and His joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God that is within you. And these are spiritual forces from your Heavenly Father that are given to you to um, rule and reign with. These are powerful, powerful spiritual forces. So let's just acknowledge that. Father, I thank you that your kingdom is not meat and drink, but your kingdom in me is your righteousness, 
your peace, and your joy. I thank you, Father, that I have your righteousness. I am full of your peace, and I am full of your joy in Jesus' name. And then you're very familiar with this as well, Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit that is within you, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you is His love, His joy, His peace, His long-suffering, His gentleness, His goodness, His faith, His meekness, and His self-control. And then it says, against such, there is no law. Then he goes on to tell us to walk in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is allowing these forces to be manifest in you. And how do we do that? By acknowledging every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. By saying, Father, I thank you that I am full of your joy. That the joy of the Lord is my strength. We're going to go back to Psalms chapter 5, verse 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. The Lord is your defense. You don't have to defend yourself. The Lord is your defense. He says, let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let them also that love your name be joyful in you. For you, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. Do you come past him as with a shield? Remember, you are the righteous. So God's divine favor compasses you as with a shield. Let's confess that. Father, I thank you for your divine favor on me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I rejoice. I shout for joy because you favor me. Everywhere I go, I am highly favored of God and man. Praise God. So we have something great to rejoice over. We joy in the God of our salvation. We rejoice in the Lord always. And that's what he says in Philippians chapter 4. And we're going to look more at joy and just the power of the joy in our life. The power of his joy in our life which the opposite of that would be to be uh, murmuring, complaining, grudging, or um, maybe being depressed. But we are free from depression. We are free from oppression. And we have the joy of the Lord. That's who we are. That's what we have in Christ as we believe it and acknowledge it in Jesus name. So enjoy all day the joy of the Lord. I speak that into you, that you are full of the joy of the Lord in your mind, in your heart, in your emotions. You are full of his spirit of joy in Jesus name.